Take it away, sir. All right. Well, what I come up with is a, a bunch of little things, but bathroom clearances. Since I've been working here, we've done almost all bathrooms is what I've worked on. But there are some measurements. A lot of this, I don't think we really have in the field a lot to do with the actual design of it all, but it's something to keep, be aware of. There are certain distances, like the center of the toilet hole from a wall should be 15 inches, and there should be 30 inches between the plumbing fixtures, clearances in front of the toilets, uh, shower should be a minimum of 30 by 30. Um, just, yeah, and there's, it's way more in depth than this. This is just a general overview, but the distance between the toilet and the cabinet, uh, I think on one job I saw where we had a 24 inch cabinet was supposed to be placed, but a 30 got put there. Uh, and you don't realize all that until it's job's almost done. And then there's like this much room and you know, just things to be aware of. Like I said, I don't know that we really in the field, any of us, have much control but we can always be watching and say hey this isn't right or uh, just be aware just be aware you can those always... who can't see or read that from there yeah can sorry you... about the pencil can you explain some of the clearances there well what we've really got is pretty much 30 inches between fixtures or between the center of the toilet the center of the sink and the center of the shower this dimension should be 30 inches between usually it's more but in some of these tighter spaces, it's actually, you know, it can be right at or even less. But as long as it's not being inspected, I don't think we really have to worry too much about that because we're not changing anything that wasn't there already. But in new construction, this is something that an inspector can actually be looking at. And if the toilet is too close to the wall, that is a plumber's problem. He put the hole in the wrong spot. But um, there needs to be 21 inches in front of the sink before you hit the wall. Same with the toilet. This shower should be 24 inches away from the wall, this enclosure, and 21 inches between the vanity and the actual shower wall. It's just a bunch of numbers, but it's all stuff that we have to be aware of, or should be, at least in the background. Just be aware. It's not exciting. It's not, <laughs> it's not cool, but those are the facts. So if we're set in a cabinet, and you realize that the toilet is way too close, um, say something. Don't wait till it gets granite sitting on top of it. Don't wait till we're trying to do touch up and close this thing tomorrow. That's that's just what I wanted to point out with that. Any questions on just want to make clearances? A quick, quick point. Um, everybody remember toilets. We always go 16 on each side just to be safe because we ran into that before where we tried going 15 and. If you're an eighth inch off and an inspector will call you, so we always just go 16 inches on each side to make sure that we to have frame or to frame or to drywall. Finish. We want 16 finish. inches finish, finish. Okay. so that we, we know there's no question about it. We yeah. know there's enough room. So, so 16 they, and a half the frame. Right? So mm -hmm. they will catch these things in, in the worst four, set of circumstances. Four. Granted, sometimes we can't do anything about it. A lot of times we, you know, it has to be framed, but we always shoot for 32. I've never heard of the 21 between the, the vanity and the shower there. I'm picturing, in, I'm picturing like a pointy wall there or something like that. Couldn't we butt up right to that? It's in, a, in the book. I don't know exactly what, what this represents, to be quite honest with you. I was more interested in yeah. the relationships here. Okay. But uh, right. it's on the, the book. I almost drew it exactly like it shows. Oh, you're talking in the code book? Yeah. And if that's, I was smarter, that, I could have put it up That's on weird because you get like a 5x7 <laughs> bathroom and you ain't got space. Why would you want that 21 inch? Well, maybe that well if you think about it normally, very rarely is the vanity in the middle. Mm -hmm. yeah. 99 times out of 100 is the toilet. Yeah, yeah it's show. usually yeah. flipped. But this is right out of the book. I've actually yeah. got the book and looked it all up and I've got some other cards. but. I don't know about this number, but I know this is probably the most important one right yeah. here. I love and the diagram. You like that? Yeah. That took a lot of time. <laughs> and when you're doing this by hand, you actually get these numbers memorized. So I thought that was <laughs> good. It was a good thing. Awesome. All right. Let's see if I can get this off of here. The next thing I have up here. Damn, son. Oh, there you Look go. at that. This is because I'm not smart enough to put it up here. <laughs> so, there's a lot of information here. I don't know that I'm going to go into all the specifics. What I'm really interested in is what's on the next page. But in walls, 
structural walls, bearing walls, exterior walls, um, any kind of holes or notches that you put in this framework. And I don't know that we have a whole lot of reason to do that, but sometimes we, we need to, mostly on the interior non-bearing walls. But there are limitations to how big the holes can be, how deep the notches can be. You mind reading each one of those? I'm going to try to read what I can here. <laughs> we'll start with the top plate. And if you have double top plates and you need to come down through the top of this, if there's a hole that's bigger than 50% of the width, it needs to have metal straps bridging that area because that wall will then be weak in a lateral way. And there are straps that we have designed just for that. And there's a bunch of nails that go in each one. But it's not just nail plates. It's not straps. just nail plates. It's a specific plate that's very specific. There's like 16 nails uh, that are going to tie that back together. Because that's what it's doing. It's actually going to recreate the strength. So there's that part. Um, the best thing you can do with the drilling through or going putting notches in the studs is actually the holes themselves. That's the best way to go. But a lot of times you can't, so you have to put the notch. But they've got it broken down because there's always different sizes of wall lumber. It's not always 2 by 4 it could be 2 by 6 even bigger. So they put everything in a percentage. So if it's an exterior wall, you can bore it up to 40% of the actual thickness of the stud. If it's an interior or a non-bearing wall, you can go to 60% of it. And as you come down through... You get into the notches, and the notches are the worst. They don't let you do but a 25% on an exterior wall or a bearing wall. It's very shallow. And they'll get you up to 40% if it's an interior wall. So you have more leeway. You can get bigger openings when you bore. The reason for the bore is because there are no stress points in a circle. If you have a square, it's going to crack or can crack in that 90 degree corner. So let's see what else I've got up here. One of the best references when you're just drilling holes and you've got to get through something, you need to maintain 5 eighths of an inch from the edge of the hole to the face of the stud. That's like one of the main criteria. If you passed that, you've done something wrong. And in some cases, you can fix it by just putting a double stud next to it. And you can have uh, that distance be less. And that's also the case in exterior walls if you have to bore or notch, you're allowed to double up the studs to recreate the strength, but you're not allowed to do that for more than two studs in a row. So if you have to go farther through the wall, then the plumbing needs to come up in a different place. But there are certain things that you can do to get bigger holes, but you have to fix it with uh, adding strength. And I think that's all I have on the walls. Any questions on walls and notching for structural passing code? Anything I've missed? How long does it take you to draw that? Mm -hmm. I said, that's a good drawing. I don't know, three or four songs, I guess. I had my earbuds in, my wife was talking with my son, so I just sat there and just drew. It's almost exactly like the book. You guys can draw it. <laughs> All right, then I've got, this is the flooring one. Now, this is actually relevant because a couple of weeks ago, we had a plumber go into a job and just destroy the actual joist, and they were a uh, uh, truss joist, not truss joist, but uh, they were the I-beam joist. This right here is basically just based on what they call sawn lumber. If you get into the engineered lumbers, you can't follow any of this information because the engineered lumber has actually got specifications from the manufacturer. So if you run into a glue lamb or a micro lamb, if you're not familiar with any of these things, it's all basically plywood laminated together or two-by material glued together. Um, there are only certain ways that you're allowed to notch that. So on a case-by-case, -case, you'll have to find out the product that you're dealing with before you can cut into it or do anything with it. But as far as basic, uh, just sawn lumber, like 2 by 12 or 2 by 8 which is common around here, what you're going to want to do is, again, it's all based on percentages, and they only want you to do... Uh, a third of the joist depth if you're boring holes. So that's uh, probably two or three and seven eighths of an inch is how big you can get in the middle of a floor joist. But it's also got to be centered and they don't want any more than two inches between either the bottom or the top to the edge of this hole. And again, holes are the best thing if you're going to go through any of these structural members. Um, 
use a hole. There is no stress in the circle of a hole. And that's why they allow you a little bit bigger holes than they do the notches. They will allow you to put a notch in the top of a joist, but it's also based on one-third of the actual depth of the joist, and then one-sixth. Um, they have a depth and a length. If it's, they only want you to go one-third the length, and then one-sixth if you're going deep. What so if your notch is circular? What if the notch is circular? It's not specified, and I wouldn't count that you're allowed to do anything other than what it says. <laughs> but rounded corners in a notch, just common sense is going to just uh, relieve that stress area because in that crack, it's, or it can crack right through here. So they, for that reason, they don't allow any notches in the center third of a span. This may not be relevant to a lot of what we do, but if you're doing something in a basement and you end up clipping or cutting through the bottom part of this joist, it can really cause a structural problem just because that is the tension side, always the bottom of these floor joists is where the, the actual critical area is. If you put a cut in the top, it's going to compress and probably stop, let's just say, if it's not real deep. But if you put it in the bottom, and all that weight is on there, that's where it's going to break loose and start this crack that can just run laterally and just create a weak spot. And I've seen that too. Actually, where plumbers have gone in and uh, butchered too much, and then part of the bathroom started sinking. But uh, that's basically what I've got on that. Any questions on Joyce? It's probably more important than the walls, in my opinion, just because the whole rest of the house sits up on top of these things, and if you messed it up some way, you have to get an engineering letter that lets us know that we know how to fix it right, so the inspectors will pass it. So, sorry, right. engineers are fast. So. <laughs> yeah. And that's all I have on that.